let's talk about chapter 19 in To Kill a Mockingbird. And now we get Tom's testimony at the trial. Okay. Um, we learned some things about Tom Robinson. Um, what's interesting is we are first greeted with the fact that he is crippled and he cannot use his left hand or his left arm. And that's, that is shown by the fact that he can't put his hand on the Bible. It falls off. He has to use his other hand to pick it up, that kind of thing. Um, he's 25. He's married. He has three children. So he is a regular person. The first thing Atticus does is really it humanizes Tom and lets the whole jury and everybody else know Tom is a real good person. But he's had some trouble. He's a normal person. We've all had bad things in our life happen to us. We've all done things we're probably not proud of. And Tom Robinson has been in jail. He was in a fight. Somebody cut him or stabbed him with a knife. They both went to jail. He couldn't pay the fine. Ended up being there for a month. The other person paid the fine and got out. And there was some commentary in the book about why this happened. And on the surface, you don't want to present yourself as a bad person. But here, we, we find out that Atticus is doing this to show the jury there is nothing to hide. We are going to give you the entire truth, even the bad stuff, like he has been in jail. He has worked for a year for Link D's, practically, um, as a field hand and as a helper on the farm, not just when crops are needing work. He works for Link D's all year round. So Atticus goes into his questioning and we learn certain things from those questions. Um, he goes by the Ewell place every day and he has to go by there. He can't go anywhere else. Um, the only way from his home to Link D's is to go past the dump, past the Ewell place. Um, he says hello to Mayella every time he sees her when he goes by. He's being polite to her. Um, she asked him to bust up the shiver rope. That was her story when we heard her giving her testimony. And Tom's like, yes, yeah, she asked me to bust up a shiffer robe. I couldn't do it. All I had was a hoe. She provided the axe and she went to pay him and he did not accept this nickel. But this happened over a year ago. This happened in the spring. It did not happen on November 21st, like she said. So this is one of the first discrepancies in their testimonies. And he knew it happened in the spring because of the tools he had for the work he needed to do. Um, he, We find out that he stopped by her yard lots of times doing chores for her, whatever she asked, help carry this water, um, chop this into kindling, whatever it was. And he never was paid for any of this. Tom Robinson was just happy to help. He didn't need the money. No one else was helping her. Kids did not help. Dad did not help. So he was happy to help her out. They talked lots of times. This wasn't a one-time thing where they talked. Um, so this is kind of interesting. It was like Mela called him over for the first time to bust up this wardrobe and then he raped her, but they've been in contact lots of times. Now we get some commentary from Scout here, and Scout talks about Mayella. Mayella is the loneliest person in the world, according to Scout. Even more lonely than Boo Radley, who's been locked up in his house for longer than Mayella has been alive. Mayella has no friends. She did not even know what a friend was when she was asked, do you have any friends? Um, She's not accepted by the white community because she lives in a dump. The whites don't want anything to do with her. Um, the blacks won't have anything to do with her because she's white. She's not rich like Dolphus Raymond, right? It's She doesn't have any group to belong with. All she has is her seven siblings and her father. Now, people of Maycomb 
treat them nice by providing Christmas baskets, giving them money sometimes when they need it, but really make home just ignores them. Doesn't want anything to do with these guys. So that was Scout's commentary. And Scout finished up her commentary by saying Tom was the only nice person that she knew. Well, that's kind of interesting. And Scout's commentary leads into with Mayella's um, motive for what she does. Okay, back to the questioning. Uh, we find out that Tom never went onto the property, never went past the fence row without permission. Um, and then on the night of the alleged rape, on the 21st of November, Mayella asked Tom to come in and fix a door. There was no chiffer robe, there was no wardrobe or anything there. Um, he was called in to fix a door. And when he gets in there, Mayella closes the door, opens the closed door. It, the door's fine. It does not need to be fixed. Tom asks her, because he's starting to get suspicious here, where are the kids? There are no kids in the area. All seven of these kids that usually hang out in the yard, hang out in the dump, they're gone. And Mayella said that, according to Tom, she saved up seven nickels. It took her a year, right, to do this. And with those seven nickels, sent the kids to town to go get ice cream. What a treat. They took the nickels and away they went. After the door thing, Mayla asked Tom to stand on this chair and get this box off the shipper rope, which he did. And while he was standing on there, what she did is she grabbed him around the legs. And this startled Tom, right? Um, he jumped off the chair. He knocked it over. He says that's the only thing he disturbed there. Um, but what was really going on is Mayla was hugging him and kissing him. She told Tom that she'd never kissed anyone before, and what her dad does doesn't count. And since she hasn't kissed anyone, she might as well kiss Tom. And he, she asked him to kiss her back. Okay, so she is advancing herself on the top. And that's according to Tom's testimony there. Tom says he tried to run away, tried to be let out of there, asked her to let me out, but she wouldn't. She stepped in his way, and he almost had to push her out of the way. And he didn't want to push her. He did not want to hurt her in any way possible. And at that moment, when Mayella was hugging on Tom and kissing on Tom, Bobby well saw them together through the window. And he yells at her, you goddamn whore, I'll kill you. Bobby Ewell doesn't go after Tom Robinson. He is mad at Mayella for what she has done. He saw it. And he's mad at his daughter. Tom runs away. Right? He's afraid of what's going to happen, so he takes off. When asked by Atticus, he reiterates he did not rape Mayella. He reiterates he did not harm her in any way, and he tried to resist her advances. So Atticus asks these questions. Tom's like, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. We get more commentary from Scout. Scout lets us know, if we didn't see it, that Tom is in a pickle. He's in a bind. He could not harm Mayella to get out of the way, to get out of there, because he would be in trouble if he knocked her down, if he hurt her. But he did run when he had the opportunity. And running is a sign of guilt, right? You're running away from the problem. You don't want to get caught. That's what people believe. So this looks bad either way. Atticus continued the questions. And Tom's answer says that Bobby Ewell was looking and yelling at Mayella. It was as if Bob was ignoring Tom. Tom used that opportunity to escape. Why did he run? He ran because he was afraid. And then we have this interesting interruption from Link Deeds. 
and he basically stands up and he yells out that Tom Robinson has been working for him for a long time and there has never ever been any trouble with this person. Judge Taylor of course gets mad, yells at him, tells him to be quiet. Um, if he has something to say, he has to go through the proper procedure and be sworn in and basically the judge kicks him out. He does. The judge doesn't want to hear this case again. Judge Taylor has set up the trial and if Link Dees has interfered with the jury with what he says, there has to be a whole nother trial again. Judge Taylor wants nothing of it. So I think it was Jem made a little comment that it wasn't like the jury was saying things. Link Dees was just disturbing the peace. Not a big deal. We won't have to do a retrial, but he does get kicked out and he leaves. Um, now it's time for Mr. Gilmore to present his questions. And the first thing Mr. Gilmore did was bring up the fact that Tom was not a good person all the time. He was in jail. He did commit a crime. Mr. Gilmore asks him how strong you are, right? Are you strong enough to bust up some wood, bust up some furniture? Tom says, yes, he's strong enough to do that. Mr. Gilmore says, then you're strong enough to choke someone, right? Of course, Tom denies it, but he's like, well, I suppose I am strong enough. So Mr. Gilmore's questions are set up to make Tom look like a bad person. He's been in jail. He's strong. He could choke someone. And then he starts ta talking about doing a lot of chores for Mayella. Why are you doing these things? Gilmore is implying that Tom's doing this for some ulterior motive, right? He's trying to do this maybe to get Mayella's attention, to get her to be with him, whatever it is. Um, implying that Tom is not being you know, honest in his helping Mayella. And basically, Tom says he tried to help because no one else did. The kids didn't help. The community doesn't help. The father doesn't help. So he's there, and he does a lot of chores for her, and he continues on home to do his chores at home as well. And then he says he felt sorry for her. This is a really bad moment for Tom and the defense. What happens here? he felt sorry for a white woman. When you feel sorry for someone, what you're doing is you're judging that person's position and you are not in that position or you've been there and you've risen above it and you are above that person you feel sorry for. For Tom Robinson, this African-American guy, to feel sorry for Mayela Ewell, a white girl, means that he is placing himself above her. And in the 1930s, this was unthinkable, right? So the whole court, the audience there realized this and the judge was ready, right, to start pounding on the gavel to get order back in the court, but it didn't happen. So that was a really interesting moment there. He continued with the questions and wanted to know why Tom Robinson ran. And Tom said he ran because he was scared. He was scared to be in court for hurt Mayella. He was scared to be in court to be accused of what he didn't do. And yet here he is in court being accused of what he says he did not do. And at that moment, Scout left. Jem made Scout take Dill outside. Dill was starting to cry. He was holding in for a bit. He started sobbing louder and louder and louder. People from all around are looking at him. And Jem says, Scout, take Dill outside. Stop being a distraction. I'll make you. Remember, Scout has to listen to Jem when he makes her. But before Jem got the opportunity, Reverend Sykes was like, yes, take him outside. And Scout listens to the adults, of course and took Dill outside, crying, having a fit over this trial. He could not stop crying, and Scout did not understand why this was happening. 
scout thought that he had not recovered from running away yet. Okay, which is not the case. Here's another example of scout not understanding what's happening. Um, what really happened is Dill could not stand the way Mr. Gilmore was being hateful to Tom, the way he looked at Tom, the way when Tom was speaking, Mr. Gilmore looked at the jury as if, get a load of this guy, calling him boy. It was horrible the way this prosecuting attorney treated Tom. Now, Scout figured this was the way all prosecuting attorneys operate, which is kind of what they do. But Dill didn't see this as right. Um, he points out that Atticus doesn't do this. And Scout's like, well, that's just the way Dad is. Um, and then all of a sudden, here's Mr. Golfus Raymond. Heard them talking, and he's like, he understands, right? And it just makes him sick, right? It just makes you sick, doesn't it? And that's where the chapter left off. So this is interesting. We have Dill being so compassionate that he can't even contain himself. And we are left with Scout and Dolphus Raymond and Dill. And we start the next chapter with Dolphus Raymond offering Dill a drink to help him feel better. So that'll be kind of interesting when we read this, which will be soon.